Well, good morning, everyone. And welcome to our beautiful Cathedral of St. Paul. We especially welcome any visitors who are with us here today, as well as those who are praying with us across the Archdiocese, even across the world, on relevant radio, or by live stream. The Mass, as it happens every Thursday at the Cathedral, is offered for the Cathedral benefactors. Father Jubel is offering his a private intention uh, for the repose of the soul of Albert Leonard Hagstrom, Jr. And our entrance antiphon can be found on page 35 of Magnificat. You, O Lord, are close, and all of your ways are truth. From of old I have known of your decrees, for you are eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So my sisters and brothers, as we gather here today, we hear about the Lord being a trustworthy um, source in our life. As we prepare to celebrate the mysteries of Christ's love, let us begin by calling to mind our sins, those times in which we've doubted the Lord and instead gone our own way and gone against what he's asked of us. And let us turn back to him and ask for his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come to our help with mighty strength, that what our sins impede, the grace of your mercy may hasten. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, they will sing this song in the land of Judah. A strong city have we. He sets up walls and ramparts to protect us. Open up the gates to let in a nation that is just, one that keeps faith, a nation of firm purpose you keep in peace in peace for its trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. He humbles those in high places, and the lofty city he brings down. He tumbles it to the ground, levels it with the dust. It is trampled underfoot by the needy, by the footsteps of the poor. The word of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This gate is the Lord's. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my heavenly Father. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. The Gospel of the Lord. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. These are the words from the prophet Isaiah in our first reading. So today we hear about the rock. Many times through scripture, there are images used to portray things of this earth that give insight into the spiritual life. Oftentimes we hear about living things, seeds that are planted and sprout and grow and watered and nurtured and come to life and harvesting. I am the vine, you are the branches. We also hear about the sheep and the fold and shepherding. Today, the rock. Of course, the rock's not alive and animate like those other things, but it can still give us insights from nature into our spiritual struggle to become holy, to become saints. Think about a rock, what comes to mind? So we hear in the scriptures, it's durable, sturdy, long-lasting. Isaiah says, everlasting. And rock has inherent beauty. No matter what state we find it, there's something beautiful in that rock. Now, we can take those and make them more beautiful, such as many of the rocks, the stone we see around us here in the cathedral. You know, it didn't necessarily begin that way as we see it now, like the shiny floor. Had it taken out of the quarry, buffed, sanded, cut, polished, put in place. It's beautiful. And it takes effort to keep it that way, continually cleaning, maintaining. So what we know about that rock tells us something about our spiritual journey as well. Inherent beauty, sometimes it's covered up in disguise and it takes effort to bring it to its full luster. In our gospel, we hear about the house that's built on rock and another one that's built on sand. And they're both subject to the same events and forces. Rain falls, floods come, winds blow. It's the same for both houses, but very different results. And that's true for us in our life as well. Things will happen. We can't control that. But we can impact the outcome, how we respond to those events. And the scripture says the difference between the two houses is one's built solidly on rock. It doesn't say that the rock's solid. It says the house is built solidly on the rock. It points to that connection between the house, or us, and what is solid, everlasting. That's the rock. This marble floor is very beautiful, durable. It's hard. I know that when I kneel on it, my knees tell me, that's a hard surface. But also, if it should get wet, if we spill something on it, it gets, gets slippery. 
So even though it's durable and forever, it can, I could slide right off of that if it should be wet. And that might be true of us as well. The Lord can be our rock, but we need to be solidly built on him. Otherwise, when those storms come in our life, we slide right off. And that's the amazing gift we have in the Eucharist, which we can receive here at Mass, sacramentally for those present, spiritually for those distant. But it's that attachment between us and our Lord. And the uniqueness and the power of it is that it's not just external. We receive him internally. And he transforms us internally and unites us uniquely to be like him and affixed firmly to him so that we can't slip off. There are many storms blowing in the world today. Perhaps there's some raging in your life right now. Our scriptures tell us those things will happen. We can't stop that. We can't prevent it. But we can dictate the outcome. We do that by uniting ourselves completely and totally to the Lord. We can trust in him. The Lord is an eternal rock. Please stand for our petitions. With readiness to welcome Christ, who comes each day by his grace, we present our needs to the Father. For Pope Francis and Archbishop Hebda, may they always remain hopeful as they lead us in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to religious persecution, may we work to eliminate the persecution of all people who are unable to practice their Christian faith freely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly, homeless, and unborn, may the coming Messiah enlighten us to bring hope to all those who the world often overlooks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they be ushered into the eternal banquet in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that our salvation is near at hand. Please hear these our prayers, for we make them in faith and humility through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all this holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings you make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever heard and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
our communion and the fun. Let us live justly and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope and the coming of the glory of our great God. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Deacon, for another great homily. Um, for those of, you who, those of you here at the cathedral who wish to continue your time of prayer, you're invited to join Deacon in the St. Joseph Chapel um, for praying a morning prayer. I wish you all a beautiful and a blessed day. May we stay grounded firmly on the Lord. And may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.